Hi everyone, my name is Aman Sharma and I'm a 17-year-old climate justice activist and wildlife conservationist from New Delhi, India. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my story of falling in love with wildlife and how I started activism and environmentalism and why it is so important for other youngsters to do so as well. My entire childhood was spent visiting national parks, sanctuaries and forests across India. Instead of fancy destinations, my parents took me to these lovely jungles and introduced me to the wild. And then around four years ago, a small red vented bulbul built a nest in my balcony. I decided to sit outside and observe it for a while. And in that one sitting, I got to see around nine to ten other species of birds at my own balcony. I was shocked to find this little world of birds right outside my doorstep. But when I asked my science teachers about it and my parents and my friends, no one had a clue what species they were. And to me, as a little child, I found that really, really odd about how no one had any idea about these wonderful winged creatures that inhabited the very spaces that we lived in. And because of that, I started bird watching. I started observing, noticing, hearing the calls of birds around me. And I was introduced to the 500 species of birds that Delhi has. Even though it is one of the most polluted cities in the world, it is also the second most bird populous city in the world. Which is unfortunately a fact that most of its own citizens have no idea about. Looking at the fact that my friends didn't know anything about the natural world and realizing this was due to a disconnect between classroom learnings and practical reality outside of our schools. And because of this elemental relationship between man and nature, which had completely been destroyed in the urban setup, I decided to take things into my own hand, give them the experience of being in a forest and interacting and engaging with nature by directly taking them into forests and sanctuaries through bird walks and nature workshops. I teamed up with two more young bird watchers to do this and soon the Cuckoo About Nature Club was born. The Cuckoo About Nature Club is now the largest and the first youth-led birding community in all of India. And we have held more than 32 bird walks, we've had an annual quiz, we've done community art sessions to talk about endangered species and we've just managed to form a community of young kids who are fighting to save the planet. The unique concept of this bird watching group and community is that instead of adults, we get children to lead bird walks for other children, making the process so much more engaging, fun and interactive. I think the misconception that most people have when they think about birders is a 60 year old white man with binoculars uh, and a bad posture. But we've been trying to break that misconception by telling people that bird watching is fashionable and it's something that honestly can help raise a lot of awareness about the natural world that exists in our own backyards and our own neighborhoods. Though activism has always been a huge part of my journey as an environmentalist, I'm also a passionate wildlife photographer who loves spending my weekends tucked away in grasslands across India instead of partying with my friends. Um, so I co-authored two books um, as part of the Big Little Nature Book series published by Darling Kin Dursley under Penguin, um, which are 100 Indian animals and 100 Indian birds, which used photographs that I had clicked from across India. One thing led to another and very soon I was engaged in the Fridays for Future movement where I started organizing strikes. In a country like India, the climate crisis isn't exactly given first priority and that was something that I decided to change and I decided to take action on. In May 2019, when my city and my country were both reeling under horrible heat waves, I decided to start a petition for India to declare a national climate emergency on change.org and we were able to gather 370,000 signatures on it. Very soon the petition went viral online and I was contacted by change.org to help set up this organization called All In For Climate Action, which is an initiative consisting of 110 delegates from 70 countries who are all running climate emergency declaration petitions in their own countries. We have around 1.6 million 
collective signatures on the movement. And we even got to present it after the rigorous selection process at the UN Youth Climate Action Summit. With All In, we achieved international and political success. Several countries actually gave in to our demands, took the climate reforms that we asked them to, and actually declared a climate emergency, like Canada, New York, um, Spain, France, United Kingdom, and even the European Union after months and months of campaigning. Because of this, I was nominated as one of two people from India by Nobel Peace Laureate Kailash Satyarthi's organization to speak at the Nobel Peace Prize Center's annual peace ceremony, but first ever convention on climate change, the Oslo Pacts in Norway. I was also selected to speak at the UNDP Nature for Life Hub at the United Nations 75th General Assembly in 2020. In April of 2020, I got together with nine other activists to form the international climate NGO Re-Earth, which is an NGO that focuses on increasing access to climate literacy and education, as well as to the international climate movement and integrating youngsters into it. We held a huge campaign called We the Planet for Earth Day, where we collaborated with several organizations like UNICEF, UNDP, Amnesty, Oxfam, as well as individuals like Jaden and Smith and Sean Mendes to hold a large campaign that was based on bringing people together and making them unite and collaborate for actual action. Re-Earth now has 300 volunteers across 40 different nations. I realized early on that what was truly important was to use my voice and my privilege to uplift other sections of society, to truly highlight their demands, their voices, and talk about the need for equitable representation from the global south in international climate discussions. Children need a say in the matters that directly affect them, and the global south needs a chair at the decision-making table. For too long, people of color and people from indigenous communities have been left out of important issues and important conversations that directly affect our future. And it's important that we integrate them back and give them the power and the rights that they truly deserve. Thank you to Heal the Planet for organizing this. And my message to everyone watching would be, if you're listening to this, step up. We need you in this movement to save the planet. And the time is running out. This movement is about equity, accountability, and responsibility. And without all sections of society acting together, especially giving the platform to the youth and communities that are already marginalized, we won't be able to move forward.